Guys, we're in the fish room today and we have a couple orders to pack for tomorrow. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a video about how to ship fish during the winter. Um, now obviously it's gonna be the kind of the same method for how you ship them out during all the other seasons, uh, but this is specifically during the winter months because I'm gonna do a couple things that are very specific to uh, the cold times of the year. Uh, so let's get on to it. All right guys, so we're gonna go over a few different things about shipping fish. We're gonna go how to choose a carrier and how much to charge um, as well as you know how long it can or how short should you do overnight should you do priority mail where it takes two three sometimes four days um, and then also how to exactly pack it how much oxygen what kind of bags you should do how to prep your fish before you even put them in there we're gonna go over all those steps um, for shipping out fish during the winter uh, today so let's start off with um, what carrier you should use so I use UPS before I use FedEx before and I use USPS before um, and my favorite is to use USPS and the reason why this is my favorite is because it is the cheapest and so that does two things that means one you have to spend less whenever you're shipping out fish to whoever but two that means you can charge your customer less as well um, so what happens you know if you ever shopped online you got your cart already and you click the checkout button and you see shipping is $80 you go, whoa okay maybe I'm not gonna buy these fish maybe I'll try to look in store instead well with USPS I can do a flat rate medium box for like $14 $15 and that's the shipping charge that's it that's how much it costs to ship uh, but with priority mail um, it'll get there between two and four days depending on how far that individual whoever you're shipping it out to lives away from like a main hub in their city um, so sometimes it takes two days sometimes it takes four or somewhere in between right uh, now you could use UPS or FedEx is gonna be a lot more expensive uh, but you can have overnight options you can have two-day options you have next day options you got a lot of different options that you can choose from that would allow your fish to get there much sooner um, and I think those options are better for when it's really really cold really 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 hot um, or really sensitive fish but for everything else I use USPS flat rate box because the boxes are free you can order these off of the USPS website and it'll cost you nothing and they'll drop it off and deliver it to your door and let me show you I got a whole stack that whole stack right up there that's all tons of boxes uh, that I use to ship out my fish now the other reason why I like using USPS is because it makes it easy right this box $15 so uh, to ship it out, I'm gonna charge you $15 plus the fish, right? There's no guessing game. There's no having to weigh it, none of that. I know exactly how much it's gonna cost to ship and there's not gonna be any surprises, right? Uh, so let's go to the second step. Once you figure out how and where you're going to ship, who you're gonna use, uh, let's talk about how to prep your fish. And this is really important. So here we have one of the fish racks here. Um, and a good thing that you wanna make sure you do is you want want to not feed your fish. And so for example, this tank right here has some fish that I'm gonna ship out. They have a few lot of caras in there, the happy cichlid down there. And I'm gonna ship those fish out. And so I made sure I did not feed this tank the past couple days. And the reason why is so that they're less likely to poop and therefore less likely that there's gonna be waste in the bag creating ammonia and, and, and other things that we don't want in the bag while they're traveling. Now, after you know where you're gonna ship and who you, what carrier you're gonna use and you're not feeding your fish because you wanna fast them for at least 24 to 48 hours to make sure all that waste is, the most of it is out and there's not gonna be a whole lot during that transit time. Um, next, I'm gonna show you the supplies you need to actually ship a fish during the winter. So the first item you're going to need is a box and this is really going to be the same no matter what carrier you use whether it's USPS, UPS or FedEx it's the same. You get your box and you're going to tape it up and it's nothing complicated. You do one across um, each way right. Um, that way it just holds it secure and it's not going to open up. Now the other thing you're going to want to do, um, and this is during the winter months, is you're going to want to seal up the edges too. And this is just an added layer to help keep more heat in your box and therefore keeping your fish 
more toasty um, and more likely to live come whenever they arrive to wherever they're going. Now, once you have your box kind of taped and open up and ready to go, you do want to insulate your box. Now, this is very important, right? You don't want to just put shredded paper in there or you don't want to put like that fiberglass mesh in there. They're, your fish are not going to survive during the winter uh, with that kind of setup. You're going to have to insulate the box. And to do that, it's pretty simple. So down here, I have some pre-cut um, insulation board. So you can buy this where it's pre-cut, a little bit more expensive to do that um, or what I used to do and sometimes I still do because I still have some left is you can buy a whole sheet of insulation board an eight foot by four foot board for fifteen dollars eight feet of it and it, it costs fifteen dollars and it'll it'll probably last about 25 packages worth um, so you get a good bit out of it let me show you what I have left of mine so this is one of my insulation boards you can see you just cut out it right and so you're gonna have to measure the inside of the box and you just cut it with a knife or a razor blade and that's how you would line the box. Uh, but today we're gonna use the pre-cuts that we have so I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the box and show you how that looks. Now this is really simple, whether you're cutting it yourself or you have the pre-cut, you're gonna wanna make sure you have uh, a board on the bottom, all four of the sides and on top and that will make sure you have a good insulated cooler there to keep your fish nice and toasty. Now, once you have your box lined with insulation um, and your box is good to go, really what you need now is bags. And so let's talk a second about different types of bags. So here I have, I think this is a three inch by 15 inch bag. Now this thing seems small, but this is the bag that I use all the time. Now I would say if you have a three fish, three inch fish or less, you can put them in here. Um, if you have larger fish, well, you can get much larger bags. Um, and these don't cost that much. You can get them on Amazon. There's lots of different places where you can buy um, these bags and they come in like a hundred pack. They cost like 20 bucks and you get like a hundred or 200 bags, right? Um, and you get two mil, three mil, one mil. I normally like getting the two mil or three mil because they're a little bit thicker and they're a little bit harder to burst or um, for a uh, for a fish to stick its spine through and, and uh, all the water leak out. Um, so depending on the size of fish will depend on what size bag you use. Now, whenever I use a bag, I normally use this one. Um, I do normally double bag all of my fish and I'm gonna kind of show you how much water I put in here and then how I seal it as well. All right, so if I'm gonna fill this up with water, generally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two containers. One container is gonna have the fish. Now we're just pretending we have fish this time because I'm not packing this until tomorrow. Um, um, but imagine you caught the fish, you put them in one container. Now you have that same tank water, but that's clean over here in another one. Uh, now this one has all kind of floating plants. Generally, I'll take those out. Uh, but here is your other water that's clean. Generally, what I do is I open up the bag a little bit and I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water in here and I'll show you how much you need for a three inch fish or less. Generally, this is about how much water you're gonna need, right? This whole bag, and this is all you're gonna need. Now, this is generally for, you know, two and a half, three inch fish or less. Um, probably like a two and a half inch, inch fish or less. Uh, but this is what you're, how much water you're gonna want. Now, generally what I do after that is I put the clean water in, and then I hand grab the fish. Now, I think this is important, right? Because some fish, they're gonna get caught in the net, um, and it, I think nets do more harm than good um, and actually handling it with your hand is actually safer for the fish now, you don't want to handle your fish all the time because that will affect his slime coat but transferring it from here to here is no problem now once you have your fish in here you can kind of see if you need to add a little bit wa more water or not uh, but generally this is how much water I will have in my bag um, now there's a couple ways you can now seal this and I have a heat sealer back here. And so that's how I seal all mine. But I'm gonna pretend like you guys don't have a heat sealer. Um, and what you would wanna do is you're gonna wanna twist this and use a uh, rubber band or you can use zip ties. I use zip ties from time to time. Um, but this is fairly easy. You're just gonna keep it open. You don't need to inject any kind of oxygen. You're gonna grab it, you're gonna twist it, 
and you're gonna just grab it real quickly and twist it real quickly. And as you can see, we have a big air bubble up here and we have water down here where the fish will be. Now you keep on twisting this and what you wanna do is you want to tie it, right? And so you're gonna wanna make sure you have a long enough tail that you can actually tie it. Now we're gonna tie it. Um, I don't wanna tie this because I don't wanna ruin this one. You wanna pull hard until it's nice and tight and then you're good. Normally I don't add a rubber band, right? Sometimes I add a zip tie, but normally just tying it once is good. It depends on how well you feel the knot is on there. And then after you have it tightened, you are going to, and I'll probably use this one tomorrow, Ah, we'll just tighten it. Um, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna waste two bags, but it's all right. So you're gonna tighten it all the way down, and as you can see, it's nice and good. You're gonna make you're gonna do the old leak test, make sure nothing comes out. Do it for a little bit. Don't squeeze too hard, but you're gonna want to put a little bit of pressure. It's looking good. No water's coming out. So now we're gonna double bag it. You're gonna get your second bag. I really like these bags because they already come with a curved bottom, as you can see, so there's not gonna be any corners. So there's no need to do any kind of trickery or tape the sides or anything like that because these ones uh, that I bought already come with the corners kind of built in or taken out, I guess. Um, so all you have to do is then slide it into the second bag. Now, it all depends what kind of fish you have. If you have a, a smaller catfish that has like some spines, you may want to do three, four bags, right? Maybe two's not enough. Um, and so it all depends on what kind of fish you have. Most nano fish, two uh, bags are going to be a-okay. Uh, normally I do chop the tail off of this first one, but I forgot to this time. So we're just going to stuff it down in there. Now we don't want any air in this second one. So once it's up top, you're good. You do the same thing. You're going to twist it really well because you want this one to be watertight also. Just in case the first one gets punctured, this second one is also watertight. And so water won't go all over your package and ruin your whole thing. And here you go. Now we have a perfectly bagged fish. Now what we would do after that is we would take our box and we're gonna plop our fish in there and you're gonna see what the best orientation is, right? Um, a lot of times I like plopping mine kind of at an angle like this and I'm gonna stuff paper in here in different areas to make it do a-okay. Now normally I'm gonna have two or three different fish. What I like to do is I like to individ I like to put one fish per package. So one fish in this one and let's pretend we have another one. We have another fish, another fish. So if someone's buying five fish, they're gonna get five double bag bags. Um, because in my opinion, if, if you put five fish just in one larger bag, well, if one fish dies, if something happens to that one fish, it's gonna pollute the water and it's slowly gonna kill all the other fish, which we don't want. And so I really like doing one fish per bag, unless they're tiny, tiny, like chili rasboras. Yeah, you can put you can put three or four or five in one bag. Um, but if they're if they're anything over an inch, you know, two inches or more, I'd like to put them in its own bag. Um, so once you bag them, we're gonna pretend like we have three or four here. Um, you wanna add some paper just so things don't get shaken around because there's a lot of movement in here. Um, and I'll show you what I use for paper. So this is my filler paper. It's just really thin sheet. Um, I actually got this at Home Depot. It comes in, let, let me show you what it comes in. So I got, I got this whole stack here. This is probably like 500 individual little sheets of paper. And it's about, you know, four feet long by two feet wide, I would say. Um, and this makes great filler paper. Let me get it set up. This makes great filler paper. And so all you have to do is tear a little bit of it off, you crinkle it up kind of softly, and you stick it underneath some of these, wherever it makes sense, right? And so we're gonna do a little bit more right here. And then we're gonna do a little bit more. And you just wanna make sure there's enough in there that as this box get moved around, that the individual thing doesn't get tossed all over. And I'm actually gonna add more paper. And if you have multiple bags with its own fish, 
Um, sometimes what's good to do, especially if they're really stressed and skittish fish, is you roll your, your fish in the bag around the paper so that it can't see any other fish and it won't be spooked. Um, so you do that. We'll add a little bit more paper. We'll add a little bit more paper. There we go. There you go. Now this is pretty good. Um, this will allow it not to get shaken up as much. It's gonna help keep it in the one spot um, pretty well. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do, and this is the most important part, is you're gonna wanna put a heat pack in. But you can't just put any heat pack, right? So the ones that you can find at the stores, they're 10 hour heat packs. Generally, a 10 hour heat pack is not gonna work, right? If you're doing priority mail, this is gonna be in the mail for anywhere from two to four days, right? That's much longer than 10 hours. And so if we're shipping during the winter and we're using priority mail, we do not wanna use 10 hour heat packs. We want to use something a little bit longer. And what you can use is 96 hour heat pad. This is going to last a little while. Or I also have a 40 hour heat pad. And so depending on where you're shipping will depend on if you're going to use a 40 hour, a 10 hour, or a 96 hour heat pad. Um, and it also depends on how cold as well. Um, now these heat packs, um, you do need to shake them for a little bit, right? And so what I would recommend is shaking them for like 10 minutes and then you're gonna let it sit, right? I don't wanna open this one because I'm not gonna ship it out to tomorrow, but you're gonna open it and then you're just gonna shake it, shake it for a while and then make sure you're inside. I'm in my garage and it gets cooler here. Go inside your house and just leave it on your countertop. Come back in like 15 minutes. If it feels hot, it's good, right? You always wanna test these because if you have one that malfunctions, I had that happen before, your fish are gonna die, right? It, they're not gonna be able to survive, you know, 40, 40 degree weather. Um, and so you wanna make sure this thing is hot before you put it in here. Now let's talk about how you put this in the box. Now generally what you're gonna do is you're gonna shake it, you're gonna make sure it's hot, then you're gonna wrap it in paper. Make sure it's wrapped in paper. It has to be wrapped in something that's breathable. You don't wanna wrap, you don't wanna just tape it because tape is plastic and tape is not breathable. And if it doesn't have air, it's not going to heat. And so there has to be some kind of airflow um, uh, around very close to the opening. Then you're gonna take the top and you're going to tape it right here to the top of the lid, right? And then once it's taped, it's essentially gonna float like this and you're gonna set it on top and you're good to go, right? And now all you have to do is close it up And then we're going to then just tape the box like we did, right? So the same thing that we taped, right? Just horizontally, vertically, and then on the edges. Now, I don't want to tape this one because I am going to use this one tomorrow whenever I ship it out. And guys, that's it. Like, it's really simple to ship out fish. Like, it's not difficult. And my success rating on shipping fish and them getting to the place alive is like 98%. Like, I have lost fish in the mail. They have died. Um, but um, majority of the time, like 98, 99% of the time, they're gonna get there alive if you do it correctly. Now, I did have a couple deaths before, and that happened to a malfunctioned uh, heater. Uh, like, it just wasn't hot. When it got there, it wasn't hot even when they received it. Um, and so that's why you got to make sure you really shake your packet and then you feel it to make sure it is indeed hot. And then whenever you put it in your box, you wrap it in paper. You don't want to wrap it in plastic. You don't want the tape directly touching it. That way um, it will last the full time that it says it should last for. Now shipping isn't too difficult, but what a lot of people skip out on is the foam installation board. People say, you know, I don't know if you need that. I'm just gonna stuff the, the fiberglass filling, that mesh stuff. Um, that's gonna keep it fine, that's gonna be okay, and it's not. That's not gonna do all right. 
that will be okay during the springtime, right? During the fall time when it's not too hot, not too cold, that will be fine. But if we're talking about in the winter, you're gonna wanna make sure you use insulation board. Now I recommend a half inch or above, right? So you're talking about your half inch, your three quarter inch, or even a full inch insulation board. Those are gonna be your best bet. You don't wanna do a quarter inch or less. Yes, you get more space in your box, um, but really it's not going to keep it as hot um, as long and it's not gonna be as efficient. And so if you're shipping to Michigan or Massachusetts or New York, like I do from time to time, it gets cold up there in the winter. It gets really cold. Um, and you want, you're gonna want at least a half inch thick insulation board or more, right? Um, and that's generally what I see works best. Now, some other questions I get is, is there anything you can put in the bag to help keep the water safe? Um, and some people use prime, some people use this gravel cat litter stuff that absorbs ammonia. There's a lot of different things you can use. Um, I just got this from a, another fish keeper that lives close, a friend of mine. I have not used it, um, but he has shipped out fish before and he says he uses this and it works well. This is a poly filter and what it does is it ex it's a little sponge that absorbs the ammonia and nitrate. It, it helps keep your water in the bag healthier and less toxic to your fish um, because it absorbs all the toxic stuff in the water. Um, so this is another good one to stick in there. Um, so if you ever have a situation where you are going to have to put multiple fish in one bag, definitely use one of these. Um, the way it works, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for you. The way it works is, is just a sponge, single sponge, and you're just going to use one little cube of it, and that goes in the bag. That's it. That's all you need. And so this costs about 10, 12 bucks if you buy it online. Um, and it should last, you know, what, 40, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 back packages worth um, because you're just gonna use a little cutout, a little chunk of it in each one. All right, so let's talk about how to charge for shipping and how much because we used a few different things that add up over time, right? And so the shipping on itself for a medium flat rate box is $15 at USPS. So you're gonna have to charge at least $15. But we also use insulation board, right? Now, this insulation board, I got 20 packs worth for about $20. Um, so we'll say it's a dollar for everything we're at. So we're at $16 now. Then we also use two bags plus we said we had three fish in here how many fish am i shipping out tomorrow um i am shipping out two of the happy cichlids the lot of caras and then two dwarf water lettuce tomorrow um and so that will be one that'd be four or five bags essentially and so if a bag is 20 if it costs 20 dollars for 100 bags what is that 20 cents a piece, right? So let's say that's another dollar, right? So we're at $17. Then you gotta account for tape. Well, this tape came in one of the packages that are free from USPS, right? Because the box is free too. So this is free, although you may pay for yours or you have some laying around. Um, that is gonna be 17 bucks so far um, because those two things are free. But we also have heat packs. Now, heat packs can be expensive. Uh, let me go get the invoice real quick. So for 24 pack of 90, 96 hour heat pack. It cost me $25. So essentially almost a dollar heat pack, uh, which isn't a bad deal. So we would add another dollar because we're using one heat pack. And it depends how big your box is. If you're doing a large box, a large flat, flat rate box, I normally recommend doing two heat packs in there. Um, a medium one, one is good enough to keep that uh, nice and heated. Um, so overall, we're at $18 uh, for the total cost of shipping, right? Um, if I look at the rest of this I don't think there's anything else sometimes you may add stickers in there um, or a thank you note or whatever so if you have other expenses that you would put into your box you would just add it from there but for me it costs $18 to ship this out to anyone so if you buy on my website I think it's a flat rate of $16 plus another dollar shipping and handling uh, for handling um, so you're like 17 almost 18 bucks so that's the reason why my shipping uh, prices on my website is around $18 
dollars uh, because that's how much it generally costs me to ship out items. Um, and since I use USPS priority mail, it takes a little bit longer, but I have great success doing it. Um, I can keep the prices very, very low uh, for our customers. Now, generally, once you have everything packed up, you're gonna go to the USPS website and you're gonna choose the click and ship. Now, this is very important, guys. You could just take this package and go straight to USPS and wait in the two hour line that they have, then get to the counter, then tell them where you wanna send it to and they print out the label for you. Um, if you do that, not only are you gonna to have to wait in line, which could take hours, um, but you also pay a premium. You have to pay the consumer price for shipping, which is more than the $15 I was telling you. Um, now, if you do it online, which is you don't have to wait, you can just drop it off at USPS, skip the line, but you also get commercial rates, right? And so if you do the click and ship option in USPS, you create an account, you hit click and ship, you fill out the information, you print the label on your printer, you tape it to your box, uh, it'll cost you $15, you get the commercial pricing, and then you just walk into USPS, and generally they have a drop-off zone for people who already paid, already have a label, everything's done. Um, and so there's been times where the line was out the door, and I just whacked, walked right past everyone. Everyone was giving me the eye, they're like, wait, what is he doing? You can do that? You can pay ahead? Um, and you, it, it's so nice to be able to skip the line and not have to stay there for an hour. Um, and at the same time, you also get the savings benefits, right? USPS knows that the line gets very long. And so they incentivize you to use their online resources um, in order to not have a gigantic line at USPS. And so you get those benefits if you use the online resources. Well, guys, that's how you ship during the winter. That's how you pack your box efficiently. Uh, that's what bags you choose. That's what boxes you choose. That's what, uh, I guess, insulation board and heat packs that you should use. Um, and this is a really good cost-effective way to ship out your fish and them still be alive whenever they get to wherever they're going. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it, let me know in the comments if I should do more of the business side of fish keeping, if I should make more videos like that. Until next time, guys. I'll see ya.